Now we're going to talk about um, getting ready to render <laughs> your project. Um, I, I, I had wanted to address the sketchy lines uh, option in the display, graphics display, and I can't remember if I put it in the in last week's videos or not, or the previous one. So I'm going to hit it real quick, like so. In in just about any type of view, and just about any type of uh, visual display, <clears throat> you can convert over to sketchy lines, which makes it look kind of hand sketched. And we go into graphic display right here, turn on sketchy lines, and jitter is the amount of jitter, the waviness of the lines, and the extension is how far the lines would extend out beyond their endpoint. So you, you kind of just have to play with these in the view that you're looking at. <clears throat> okay, and so there it is. Um, makes the bricks look really, really bad. So let's pull our jitter down. Okay, so that that looks a little bit better. And you can see the, the way the facial lines look there and the roof's kind of edged out. Um, let's take extension up way up so you can see that. So you can see how it extends out <coughs> beyond the end point. So these are things that you would play with if you're trying to create an image that appears hand sketched, and if you will. And uh, you can do these under shaded or realistic, and it gives it a, an appearance of painted or watercolored. This is going to take a while. Okay, so maybe not realistic because we're using JPEG or bitmap images in there. <clears throat> it still does some of it, but shaded shaded looks looks pretty good with that. Uh, here's here's an interior kitchen, okay, and you can see the the sketchy lines there. So it looks kind of cool. It's an interesting thing to uh, to play with. Well, I'm going to turn those off for these views, and then we will get into. Our topic here this week. So we're going to start off talking about uh, <clears throat> the photographic exposure. Um, we're uh, with rendering. It's like we're creating a photograph. So if you have if you have any experience with photography, uh, whether you know film cameras or, or digital cameras, and in Photoshop or those type photo editing programs, this will come a little easier to you. Uh, to understand about exposure and highlights and color temperature and those kinds of things. <clears throat> and so it's, it's, it would not be unheard of for you as an, as an, you know, a first year Revit operator to do some renderings on projects. It really would, <laughs> I bumped my mouth. It would depend on what, you know, what kind of company you're working for. And are you the only person or are you one of, you know, one or two or, Maybe you're the lone, lonely peon in, in an office of 50 Revit operators. Uh, the, it's the kind of thing, the more you, you work with it, the more you'll understand it. Uh, I had, had one previous student uh, a number of years ago, and she went on to make her own business doing renderings. Uh, whether through, she didn't use Revit, but she would use Revit models and inventor models and uh, would do realistic renderings for companies. So, it's, you know, it's, it's a cool thing to do if you want to spend the time to work on it. Okay, so photographic, the, the photorealism type stuff, especially, especially exposure settings, will only work um, in, in realistic styles and ray trace styles. Okay, uh, ray trace is not showing up here, but we'll get to it. So we want to go into the graphic display options, <clears throat> and you can do it here, or, or you can do it over here. And we, okay, so we're there.
Here we go. So we open up the realistic right here, and exposure is, is like brightness, if you will, if you want to think of it that way. Um, we can we can choose between I am missing something here. My notes are saying one thing and what I'm seeing is something different. Maybe I was watching an old old tutorial. Hmm. Anyway, so automatic it will just work automatically. Okay, so if we go to manual then we can slide our values to get brighter or darker, as you can see there. Okay, so let's go back to automatic and correct that. Now, we can play with color correction, and here's where our, our photography background comes in. And at the highlights, we'll change the light level for the lighter areas, and Shadows will change the light levels for the darker areas, okay? And then saturation would be the intensity of the colors. Okay, so you can make the, you know, the reds and the yellows brighter and more vibrant, but it works all the color spectrums, not just an individual color. Or you can tone them down a little bit. And white point, uh, this is the uh, color temperature of white light. Okay, if you got a photography background, you'll kind of understand that. <clears throat> as far as lighting goes, if you think of light bulbs, you've got cool white lights and warm white lights. Okay, so that, that's a different color temperature for the white. And so we can play with all of these things here. So, you know, we can make the highlights brighter. And you can see that. Can reach so we can make the shadows darker. Not a lot of change on that one, but a little bit. Saturation. So you can say, well, wow, that's really red bricks there. Um, so that gives it more of a warm color, okay? So these are some of the things that, that we we can correct here. We can adjust in our in our rendering. So I'm going to cancel out of that. Uh, back here, shadows. We can turn on cast shadows. Um, and we can do ambient shadows. We can turn both of those on. But these things, um, you need to have sunlight to to work it. So let's just say okay here. Uh, Come on. All right, so there's there's some shadow of the house there. And the sun settings will affect where the shadows kind of fall. Okay. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go back to shaded. It'll make things go quicker as far as my my image goes. Uh, and there is a button down here for shadows on, shadows off. Okay. Uh, sun settings, we'll get to that. Uh, let's see. Shortly. Okay. So what happens if, I, I can't remember what happens if we're in the floor plan. Come on, floor plan. Ah, so we can have shadows in a floor plan. <clears throat> That's kind of intense. I don't know that we would... I guess we would want that, but we would play with the intensity of them <clears throat> if we wanted, uh, especially like with a furniture plan. Maybe. I, I don't know. But it, it's, it is there. Okay, so the sun settings or lighting. So let's go into... Sun settings here. Okay, so we, we can go ahead and talk about these here. <clears throat> if you're doing a still image rendering, it's best just to choose still. 
and you can select a location for your project and, and, and a date and time. <clears throat> and this will calculate where the sun is at geographically at a certain day and time of the year. Okay, and you don't have to be exactly to your project address. You can be close. So, you know, I could say, I don't know, let's say Aqua, Georgia. There it is. And we can say use daylight savings time if, you know, if you want to. Okay. So let's get us in Aqua's on today's date. And at, you know, a time pretty close to this. You can change the time. You can change the date. Uh, the dates, I mean, depending on what you're doing, uh, do you want to display a winter date when the sun would be lower in the sky, you know, at, at most of the times? Or do you want, it, you know, a summer date when the sun will be higher in the sky, more direct overhead? So you, you can kind of play with those. You can adjust your ground plane level. Okay. And, and these are just settings that you can make. Now, if you go to lighting, now you can say the, the direction and the altitude of the sun, and do you want it relative to the view? And so this, this makes a difference. So let's, let's set it like this. So let's apply that. Okay, and notice our shadow. I'll have to hit OK. And as I turn my view, you see the shadow is always to the left of the project. OK, because it's relative to my view, not relative to my project. So let's go back into that. If I uncheck that, Now you see the shadow is to the to the northwest of the building, if you will, and it stays there. So that would be more realistic, but maybe it's not what you want to display in a photo rendering. Okay, and um, you could dictate here top left, top right, and it kind of overrides all of those things. Okay, so I'm gonna. Go back to still and use those. Okay. So now I want to let's um, let's see. I want to look at lighting. So let's go back into our graphics here and go to lighting. Um, we have choices here based on what our view is. And so if we, if we come right here to exterior sun, <clears throat> we'll go with that. Um, these are all grayed out and I can't remember why. Let me go back and look at something here. Maybe because... Okay, so let's go back into this now, lighting. Okay, so lighting, we got six options here. Exterior versus interior, and that means if we're doing an exterior view, we use the exterior. If we're doing an interior rendering, we use the interior. And they're, they're self-explanatory. Sun only, <clears throat> sun only would be used for a daytime rendering. Sun and artificial would be like um, a transition period, like dawn and dusk. And then artificial lighting would be a nighttime rendering. Now, if you're doing interior renderings, it, it, you could use both sun and artificial at any time of the day. Uh, so that you can see how the sunlight would affect the interior of the, of the room. Anyway, so we've got, we've got those. 
Oh, the sun setting go, takes us back to there. Um, we can adjust the intensity of these. Okay. Um, the ambient light, which is diffused, is, is only, only works in the shaded view. Okay, so it's turned off when we go to a realistic view. And then shadows can be adjusted for the darkness of the shadows. Okay. Um, so let me go back to a shaded view. And let's look at that again. And so if we set, let's say, let's set our sun at 40. And our ambient at 20. And shadows at 50. And so you can see a, a bit of a change there, okay? So let's go back in and change those around a little bit. So, I don't know, let's make our sun, I don't know, let's go back down. Let's make that one a 20. So you see it got a little bit darker there. Make our ambient light. Let's take that up. Uh, didn't mean to close it out. Anyway, you would want to play around with these. And like I said, the more the more you do it, the more you're going to understand how, how these things work. Okay. Now let's go back and look at our floor plan again. Um, If we look at our sun path, let's turn the, that off. And let's set our azimuth at like 300 degrees. You see, it, it, it goes 300 degrees is up in this direction based on our house. Uh, if we change the altitude of the sun, it means it's higher in the sky, so the shadows would be less. Okay, so you can see how those are going to affect, you know, would affect a plan, if a floor plan, if you have shadows turned on. And so normally we don't use shadows in our floor plan, so I'm going to turn that one off. Let's see, we're at 17 minutes. I'm going to pause the video and then come back with another one.